Ladies and gentlemen, meet the best game of the year, Super Mario Bros. 2! Wait, this book is actually about the third one. Oops. Super Mario Bros. 3 is considered a timeless masterpiece, and millions of people all over the globe have been playing it for more than two decades. When asked, many players say that they consider it the best game of all time. The problem is, a big chunk of them haven't played it since childhood. You can imagine that writing about something people cherish so much, without being criticized by everyone, is quite a tough challenge. However, questioning whether SMB3 is actually good, or people regard it like that simply because of nostalgia, is exactly how Alice Knorr bravely decided to start her book. Before I get any further, I want to say that I have never played any Mario game except for SMB1. I've heard and seen a lot about the 3D games in this series, but this book introduced me to SMB3 for the first time in my life. Thanks to that unique position, I can say with confidence that the author did a fantastic job at explaining even the most complex topics to readers. Most parts which describe gameplay do so in a very novice-friendly manner, so no prior knowledge of the game is needed. Some names may be confusing, especially if you never cared how Mario characters were named, but otherwise the book is surprisingly easy to read. I say surprisingly, because information is given in chunks of concentrated knowledge, which is often supported by quotes from experts. In this book you'll see opinions and answers not only from people who work at Nintendo, but also various game designers, researchers, critics, philosophers, musicologists and other professionals in the industry. Almost every sentence is also backed up with quotes from interviews, magazines, books, advertisements and even TV shows. What I like even more is that Alice goes beyond the game she is describing. In addition to delving into other games by Nintendo, differences between their American and Japanese versions of the same game, the technical aspects of their consoles, marketing, soundtracks, localization, game design and many other topics, the author provides information that any game developer would be interested in. It includes, but is not limited to, difficulty in games and how it affects players' involvement, game feel, immersive tutorials without pop-ups, manuals or texts in general, intuitive game design without hand-holding, and why arcade games used to work the way they did. Even her thoughts on gender identity, which came from a woman who grew up as a tomboy, could be extremely useful if you are making a game. Most likely, you just don't think about these things very often. Speaking of which, unlike typical university lectures, this book won't get you bored. Like a good game designer, Alice intertwines information-rich parts of the book with her own stories from childhood, making the book fun to read and allowing your brain to rest between its sections. Her stories convey a passion for video games which all gamers can appreciate and relate to. Moreover, they describe how games can influence a kid's life. If you still haven't found your answer to why you want to make video games, maybe reading about the influence they have on real people will help you with that. So far, I've only scratched the surface of what is waiting for you in this book. I believe that it would be better for you to open your mind and discover the rest yourself. In case you decide to support both the author and me at the same time, please purchase the book using the link in the description below. If you still haven't picked up reading as a hobby, now might be a good time to start. Regardless of which book you choose, your brain will thank you for it. Have fun becoming a better person than you were yesterday, and I'll see you in the next book review. Farewell.